I'm Michael Walsh, writer and artist of the forthcoming Universal Monsters Frankenstein, and you are listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book and graphic novel creators and supporters. I'm John Swinimer. On this episode, I chat with Michael Walsh about his upcoming Frankenstein series in advance of Toronto Comic Con 2024. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel. Toronto Comic Con is a spectacular three-day sci-fi, horror, anime, gaming, and comic book event in Canada that attracts thousands of people to come to the Metro Toronto Convention Center. Michael Walsh is an Eisner Award-winning artist and writer from Southern Ontario, who, in 2013, broke into comics with the Image comic book series Comeback. Shortly after, Michael contributed arc on a follow-up comic to the hit television series The X-Files for IDW. Then, in the following years, he worked primarily with Marvel Comics on superhero properties such as Spider-Man, The Avengers, and The X-Men. He also adapted the Star Wars film The Last Jedi as a comic book miniseries and created art for the DC Dark Horse crossover event comic Black Hammer Justice League. In 2021, Michael returned to creator-owned comics, creating the hit ongoing image series The Silver Coin and the viral webcomic The Sleep Stories. In 2022, he released his middle-grade fantasy original graphic novel, The Oats and the Elfine, published by Humanoids, B.I.G. Outside of comics, Michael's worked with Disney on art design for the Spider-Man suite in Disney's Hotel New York, The Art of Marvel in Paris. He has an ongoing project creating promotional illustrations for the NBA team, the Utah Jazz. Michael's also been busy working with Wizards of the Coast to create art for a number of Magic the Gathering cards. During our conversation, Michael talks about one of his upcoming projects, Universal Monsters Frankenstein, from Skybound and Image Comics. So without further ado, here's my chat with Michael Walsh about his upcoming Frankenstein series in advance of Toronto Comic Con 2024. So Michael Walsh, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, John. I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy fellow. In fact, I got to congratulate you right off the bat. I just read the news about your upcoming Frankenstein series with Skybound coming in August. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm incredibly excited about it. I uh I still think that the original Frankenstein by Mary Shelley is probably one of my favorite novels of all time. And it's uh, an influence on horror as we think of it today. So getting to play in that sandbox has been a real privilege as someone who's a, who's a big fan of horror. Oh, there you go. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you've been doing all sorts of stuff with Joe Hill and then you got your silver coin series. Like you're, you're Mr. Horror these days. So there you go. It's right up your alley. Thanks. Yeah. I, uh, for years while I was at Marvel, I kept telling people, anybody who would listen really that there's a huge market for horror in Western comics, but, uh, none of the publishers were really tapping into it at that time. And now it seems like, uh, every day there's a new horror book announced. So it's pretty exciting as, as just a fan of the genre as well. Yeah, that's terrific. That's terrific. Good stuff. So before you get going, all the questions, I'd like to know, what are you reading today? If you have any spare time, what's on your bedside reading table? I don't get to do as much reading as I used to or would like to uh, because I'm a new dad and I've got a lot of work to do. But uh, I just read a book called Metax by Antoine Cosse. I'm 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 sure I'm butchering that pronunciation, but it's it's a fantagraphics book and it's this beautiful ink wash story about a dystopic city in some strange surreal abstract future and there's this drug called the metax that is altering people's perception it's kind of almost like the spice from dune but it's it's a pretty abstract ambiguous story but just absolutely beautifully rendered and told so i really enjoyed that one great well, i'm glad glad you find time to read because I, I don't these days but good yeah. for you good for you <laughs> so we're talking here today because you're going to be tabling at toronto comic-con 2024 so with that in mind, I'd like to know, what is it you like most about going to conventions? There's two things that, but that, that are kind of in the same vein, but uh, I love getting to, getting to meet fans and see, see old fans that I've met years and years 
convention after convention, um, getting to put faces to to the fans that I speak to online on my social media and uh, and getting to talk about the books with people who are, you know, big fans of it. it. There's there's nothing as gratifying as someone coming up to you and saying, I read this thing and I really connected with it because that's what you're, you know, when you create art, you're doing it for yourself, but you're also trying to build something that that can connect and affect with affect other people and 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 bring I don't know, bring bring people together through art, even if it's horror and and despicable and scary and and disturbing. It still it still affects people, and and that's really gratifying to see. Um, and then uh, the second thing is getting to see um, friends and colleagues that I don't get to see very often because people you know travel from all over the world to come to conventions, to come to Toronto for Toronto Comic Con. And and they're people that I see once or twice a year. So getting t- to uh, connect with them and have a drink or have a coffee and, and get to hang out and catch up, the, the, that's always just really, really an, a nice experience to me. Uh, so, so if you put both of those things together, I guess my favorite thing about conventions is the people. Absolutely. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. There you go. Do you have any uh, uh, interesting moments or special moments from the past convention or festival that stands out? I don't know. I, no, I, I guess like when whenever I get to meet um, one of my art heroes and they they live up to my expectation of them or they they are very complimentary of me and my work. I I I met. Frank Miller at a convention once and he was really, really complimentary of my work. And he said that he was a fan of mine and that really just made my, made my day that day. That's for sure. (laughs) Yeah. Me and Jeff uh, Lemire got to meet him at a show and he was, he was very, very sweet and not at all what you would expect from the guy that, you know, wrote Sin City and and some of some really down and dirty comic books, but uh, he was a really sweet guy. Um, so yeah, that was something that kind of stands out, but yeah, I, there's so many experiences every, every year is a new experience at a convention. So, but that's just the one off the top of my head. Nice. That's good. Good memory for sure. So, yeah. uh, as I mentioned, you will be tabling at the show. So what will people see when they come by your table, when you'll be, uh, exhibiting at the Ronald Comic-Con? Well, hopefully they'll see me and I haven't gone to the bathroom or something <laughs> at my okay. booth, but, uh, sure. I'll be there and, uh, I'll have some issues of comics that I've drawn and written. I'll have prints. I'll have original artwork used in the creation of my comics. Um, I'll have a few t-shirts, a few zines. I'll have a pretty big variety of different kinds of things for all different price points. And yeah. And hopefully if you're a fan of my work, you'll be able to find something that you like. And if not, I'm just happy to say, Hey, and give you a handshake and, and talk about comics. Well, I'm I'm sure someone will find something there because you've got, uh, as you said, a little bit of everything for everybody. So yeah, there you go. True. So we mentioned uh, Frankenstein right off the top, but I'm wondering, do you have any other projects on the go that you can talk about? Um, that I can talk about. Well, uh, Creep Show just came out. The Creep Show Wolverton Station one shot that I did with Joe Hill and Jason Sharamella, um, which was really really fun. I've got another arc of Silver Coin coming. Later this year, hopefully, um, I've been slowly hacking away at that while I get a few other things done. And then, yeah, the main project that I'm working on right now is my uh, adaptation of, or not really an adaptation, but a companion piece to the 1931 Frankenstein film, uh, Universal Monsters Frankenstein. That'll be through Image Skybound, and that's a four-issue limited series that I'm writing and drawing that is not an adaptation of the film. It, it it's it, a lot of it happens between the scenes and, and it tells the story from Frankenstein's story from a new perspective. So I think it's going to be something that fans new and old to Frankenstein really enjoy. Uh, and I'm excited to get that out there, but uh, that's pretty much all I can talk about right now, besides some random covers and, and still drawing a bunch of magic, the gathering cards as well. Well, I tell you, you're going to be busy fellow. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I hope so. Yeah. 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 So I, I need to ask you about your tools that you use. I'm wondering what is your go-to tool for creating art these days? Well, due to my uh, tighter and tighter deadlines and my workload right now, I do a lot digitally, um, but I still do love to, to paint and ink. Um, and I've been doing a lot more uh, painting traditionally, especially for some of my more fantasy based work on Magic the Gathering. My go to tool is always like if I had to pick one thing that I could have, it would be a, a, a nice brush and and a bottle of ink is always the one that I would go back to. But um, 
lately I have really been enjoying uh, painting with liquid acrylics and mm. uh, messing around a little bit with an airbrush just to to try and get some of the effects that I've been going for in my in my more more painterly work. You can see some of that stuff on uh, some of the recent Superman covers that I painted at DC. And uh, I think there's just recently released was a just or um, a Green Lantern cover that I painted traditionally as well, which was super fun to do. I bet, yeah. It's it's always a bit rewarding when you have the tactile feel of the brush and on the paper and that sort of thing. Oh God, yeah. I just lately I've been missing the uh, the undo button when I'm painting. <laughs> but, uh, well. Yeah, I'm getting used to painting again, so it feels really nice. Good, 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 good. So as a professional in the comic book field, which you no doubt are what is the one piece of advice that you pass along to someone who's going to come to your table at the con and say i'm making my own comic book what should i do what's one piece of advice you give that person um besides just to to draw and and get the basics down like anatomy and perspective and and figures drawing figures in perspective is a really important thing i would say to start small I think a lot of young artists and young writers have this idea that they want to start off their career with their magnum opus. But uh, the problem with that is that no matter how talented you are, your first book is never going to be as good as your second book is never going to be as good as your third book. And so it's it's really good to start small, do a five page story and then do a 10 page story and, and really work your way up and build up your speed because um, it, you learn so much and so quickly at the beginning that, that doing smaller projects, uh, makes you get better exponentially with each project that you do. That's good advice for sure. Now with all the stuff that you've got going on today and tomorrow, where do you recommend people go online to find out about your current and future projects? Uh, I am on Twitter and Instagram, uh, my, uh, and Blue Sky, and my tag is Mr. M I S T E R underscore Walsh. Uh, and on Blue Sky, I believe I actually got my real name, my full name for once, because wow. it's, uh, it's one of the most common names in the world, Michael Walsh. So it's pretty much impossible for me to get anywhere. But on Blue Sky, yeah, I'm Michael Walsh. Blue sky social. So I was able to get my own name, which was nice. Uh, and then I've got, um, my, my portfolio site and my update site is Michael Walsh Um, so I'm, I'm pretty accessible online and pretty easy to find. Good. Well, Michael, those are all the questions I have for you, but I'm wondering, is there something I didn't ask that you like to get across in this interview? So all I'd say is, yeah, if you, if you enjoy my work, make sure you tell your, your local comic shop that you're going to be wanting to grab Frankenstein when it comes out at the end of the summer, because uh, I think it's going to, it's, I think it's by far the best work that I've done so far, both in terms of writing and, and in art. So um, I'm very, very proud of it and, and hoping I can get as many eyes on it as possible. And I mean, it's Frankenstein who doesn't love Frankenstein, right? Thanks to Michael for the chat. You can discover more about Michael Walsh online at michaelwalshcomics.com and on Instagram at instagram.com slash Mr. M-I-S-T-E-R underscore Walsh, W-A-L-S-H. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts. And remember to check out the truenorthcountrycomics.com website. True North Country Comics is on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel and hit the notification button. You can follow along at True North Country Comics on most social media sites. And remember, you can send any and all feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. Truth Country Comics podcast is copyright Truth Country Comics, copyright 2024.